All right, YouTubers, uh, I got a video for you here because I haven't seen a lot on this. This is a Honda Civic. It's a 2006 uh, EX. It's not the SI. Uh, I don't have the taking apart video for you because it doesn't have the energy for it. But anyways, here we go. Uh, as you can see, the... Uh, Head is off there. What do you got to do for that? Disconnect your negative terminal of the battery. There's a few other things to disconnect. Uh, alternator cables, a couple of uh, screws from here. You just bring that over and uh, lay it aside. In the back here, um, there's this plastic piece uh, which has to come off. But before that, you're going to need to take off Obviously, you'll take this piece off. It's just got two uh, little, you know, flathead screws there. You just pop that out. You'll take out your dipstick. Uh, this is that plastic piece that's at the back. Now, that just has these three little rubber, they're little rubber clips. So it just pops off uh, by hand, okay? Just going to wiggle that loose. Don't lose those little um, rubber clips. I'll show you where those are because they almost come off on me a few times. Uh, I'm probably going to have to get a light in there for you. Anyway, those rubber clips just sit in there, but you can lose those little rubber pieces. And then obviously that wouldn't be holding on too good. You also have to uh, disconnect this. You're just going to work that back and then wiggle that off. All right, um, where did we go from there? Okay, um, the alternator is uh, coming off with two bolts, a uh, small one there, and then you've got this uh, longer one in the front there. So it's just two bolts holding your alternator on once you get these um, disconnects from here, a 10 mil, uh, work that electrical connector off. You need to work uh, the other electrical piece which goes on here and then you're just going to disconnect it, pop it right out. What did we do from there? Water pump pulley came off, uh, three 10 mil uh, bolts there. You have to, if you've already taken your drive belt off, which I guess I should tell you about the drive belt coming off too. This is the uh, drive belt tensioner unit right here and I think you got a 19, uh, 19 millimeter right on the end there. Just let me focus in a bit there. 19 mil on the end and the way that I do it is I put a 19 mil wrench on there and then I have another like long wrench 22 mil and I just move that forward towards the back of the car and that's going to release the tension. I take the belt off of this portion of this part of the alternator just by uh, you're trying to shimmy it off the side there. It's a pretty tight squeeze. Uh, so there we go. You're wondering, we'll get to this thing soon. Uh, block the engine and then you're taking off uh, this passenger side upper engine mount. Okay. I got into this because there was this clatter happening uh, racket from the engine. I thought it could be um, the, the belt. I thought it might be the valves. The valves, I adjusted the valves, put it back together. That was not it. Um, I thought it was something around the drive belt. I replaced um, one of the pulleys around the drive belt. That was not it. And then I thought, okay, maybe it's the chain tensioner or the Cam, t cam chain, I think they call this the cam chain tensioner. This is the cam cha chain tensioner or auto tensioner. Uh, I've just got a very small uh, Allen key in there which holds it in place. All right, these are the two guides. This is the left hand side guide, uh, chain guide. And here is, this is the old chain, all right, that came off. now. I've seen some discussion of whether this chain ever needs to be replaced or not. So I want to show you, I'm just going to set up the camera to see if I can show you the differences. This is a new chain. I just picked this chain up from Honda today. 
it's going in. I want to show you the difference on the length. The car has 200,000 uh, kilometers on it. I want to show you the difference in length between a car, which I don't drive that car very hard. I never race that car or anything like that, but it's been my like regular commuter for the last uh, 11 years. It's a 06, 2017, this video. I want to show you the difference between these two, but I need to uh, probably two-hand this or set up the camera, so give me a sec. All right, here we go. Um, on the right-hand side here, we have the... Uh, the old chain, this is a chain, timing chain or a cam chain that has 200,000 uh, kilometers on it, just over. And on uh, this side is uh, the new chain, all right? So we've got those just hanging off uh, that thing there. And we're going down to the bottom because I want you to see so you can make a judgment for yourself about whether this is going to make any difference to you or to me or not. We're talking about a millimeter or two, two millimeters of difference in the length of these chains, okay? Like it is shorter, but how much difference is that going to make, right? That, that's my question. I'm trying to find the source of this like clatter, chatter, knocking sound. And I'm going with this just because I've tried a couple other things. And I can't can't figure it out. So I mean, those things are. Let me just see. I was gonna doing this for myself too, so I can kind of analyze things. You can see the links are lined up there. When we get to the bottom, you see how the links are not really lined up anymore, and it's slightly longer. It is slightly longer. Okay. Now I want to show you. This the tensioner, all right, because the tensioner, uh, there is a, a service limit. So they tell you before you take this off, they want you to measure, uh, and what is it exactly they want you to measure from you know this flat side of the tensioner here to this flat side of the tensioner here, and they tell you if this exceeds 14.5 millimeters then you should change the chain well when I measured that I measured that to exactly 14.5 14 and a half millimeters of length which is why I decided I'm like okay my chains out of limit that's what's that I was kind of encouraged by that I was like okay I'm gonna uh, swap that out and go from there so I was surprised to see how little difference in the chains there was. And I'm like, man, did I just waste 150 bucks on this chain or not? Well, it's gonna go back in and um, we'll have to see. I thought about replacing these guides. They're only $20, but man, like these things are in fine shape. I bet they'll go another 200. You know, they're always well lubricated. They don't have any issues. I decided not to go for it. You might think that was dumb, and maybe I'll look back and say that was dumb one day, but um, this is my third attempt to solve this one, so I'm like, no, I'm not going to put anything more in there than I have to. This is the, the little access door. Uh, I thought I could get this out through that door, and you can as long as you are able to compress this and pin it through there. If you can't pin that through there, as I said, I'm not reusing this. I'm not gonna bother pinning it because I couldn't get it to swing up there. This little piece hangs down here. And then when you compress this, it swings up. I think I can show that to you. Hang on. So here's the tensioner uh, fully extended. This may, may help somebody. It's got these uh, ridges across the top here. Anyway, you see that hole? When I compress it, right, it drives drives that up there. Yep. So um, I it tells you turn the engine counterclockwise and line those things up. As you can see, they don't line up too good, and uh, I was not able to pin that. So I just undid these and thought I would get it out through that access door. No way, it did not happen, and it got jammed in the door. So that's when I had to take the whole uh, oil pump off. If you're gonna end up at this stage like I did, uh, there's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need 
Um, this is the three O-rings, which go here, here, and right there. Uh, so you're going to need those uh, liquid gasket to put this whole thing uh, back together. So I'm pretty well at the stage now where I'm going to uh, reassemble this. So I'm going to try to show you that as, as we go. All right, new tensioner versus old. I'm going to reuse both of these. And uh, I would guess do not pull that pin out until you're got everything reassembled and you're ready to extend the tensioner. I'm sure there's a way to get this back in, but I forget what it is. So I'm not pulling that out until I get her back in there. Um, but there we go. All right, we need, before we put this timing chain uh, back on, we need to make sure that we have this up mark on the uh, camshaft sprocket. Uh, upright. There are also these marks. You can see these marks here and on the other side here. And uh, those can be level with the uh, top of the engine block. Alright, so you once you've got that, you're sure that's upright because we're gonna we're gonna need to put one of the chain links on this marked. It's you can see it's got a dimple and it's also marked with uh, some color there. The mark here that needs to line up with this mark, that dimple there. So I need to rotate the crankshaft backwards here, counterclockwise, just a little bit so that that the dimple there is going to line up with that index mark there on the engine block. So stand by for that. So I hope you can see in there now. that uh, we got good alignment now between that dimple at the top of the crankshaft and the index mark on the engine block. That should allow us to line, put the timing chain on there as it's supposed to go. All right, we got the uh, chain going on loosely here. And you can see in uh, the bottom left that um, link with a different color. and then you can see on the crankshaft there's also one of the teeth right in there has a little dimple on it okay so that link is going on uh, that tooth now up top we've got the same kind of we have uh, this this dimple which we talked about and the colored link. Okay, so that's clearly set there, and of course the the guides aren't on, so you got to make sure this lines up on the top and that lines up at the bottom with the guides in place, and then your timing is going to be gold. All right, so we're going to put the um, cam chain guide in on this side, uh, three 10 millimeter bolts there. Stop All right, like I said, I didn't get new parts here, so here's the uh, cam chain guide going in. I'm gonna have to come around to get that little one here. Okay, these want to get tightened to uh, 12 newton meters, 8.7 pound feet. There we go. So I think we can get, which is not much. It's not much pressure on there at all. Like, boom, that's done already. I was amazed how lightly these are in there. All right, that's it. Double check. One more. 
Yep. All right. Cut it there. Okay, so we're back down below at the camshaft again. Here we've got the cam chain guide in, and you can see, I want you to see right here, you can see here's the colored link, and it's on the wrong tooth right now. Uh, so I have to adjust this around. You can see it's kind of loose here, so I'm just gonna have to adjust the camshaft just, uh, or the crankshaft just back a little bit to get that tooth onto the right one. All right, you can keep it around there. There we go. So I just need to move it back a little bit. That's probably enough right there. There we go. Do you see that? See that that link now is on this tooth, that only tooth that has that dimple right there. So now we're gonna be good aligned and I'm gonna put that the other side, guide on the other side. Okay. All right, so this is the cam chain tensioner arm also not being uh, replaced with a new one. We're using the old part. It's only secured with this one. I believe that's a six millimeter. Uh, I'll confirm that with you. And that's the only way it's held in and it's free to rotate there, being pushed up here uh, by the uh, cam chain tensioner. So I'm just gonna get that installed down here. Oh shoot, I thought I had it. There we go. So I'm gonna see when I put this new tensioner back on here, how much play we have. So you can see that's how that's gonna function. The tensioner is gonna go in here and that's just gonna, once we pull that pin, it's gonna exert some pressure on here. Now, I'm gonna be interested to see just how much of that tensioner is extended. Well, let's torque that thing up 22 newton meters first. 22.6. Close enough. Yep, I think we'll I think we'll get this done here. There we go. All right, the auto uh, tensioner going back in now. 10, 10 mils. Just double check before you do this that you have that timing chain aligned correctly. I did that while we were taking a break there. Hello. Yeah, Andrew's just doing some video here. Is it actually doing it Yeah. Can you just turn off the sound for this one? Maybe. Okay, next thing is gonna be pull this pin. I'm gonna check for a third time here that I'm right, because can you get this thing back in? I don't know, but I don't wanna mess with it just in case. But man, look, that's gonna be tighter. I can't believe it, I don't know how. Okay, so I'm checking here. Yes, I have that link correctly on that one. I'm gonna go below here and double check. Are you there? Can you see this now, Andrew? Yeah. yeah. That link, I can also just barely still see that dimple underneath on that tooth, and that is good. So I'm 100% satisfied that that is right. Just before I pull that pin, I'm gonna torque these. 9.8 newton meters. 9.8, why would any bother? Okay, I wanted to show you uh, what I meant here, I talked about earlier. This distance that they talk about in the service manual is 14.5 millimeters from this edge here, right in here, flush against here, to this flat surface. They leave you a flat surface, not right to the end, but to this flat surface. And if 
I put this back about where it was to show you and actually when it was still on the car I used these uh, just as a caliper I haven't actually moved these around too much and then so while it was still on the vehicle put it there and you know if I line that up with the 10 I was showing something like this 14 14 millimeters and I thought yeah that's good enough for me I'm gonna change it 14 I thought it was 14 and a half at the time I want to show you what the, this one looks like so uh, I'm not sure we ran out of space on the card there so we torqued both of these on the uh, tensioner cam chain tensioner to uh, 10 newton meters a um, little bit of play here and I'm just gonna pull this out now there we go okay so I want to look and see what now is what are we looking at for this is like nine nine millimeters it's less than a centimeter so this is really surprising to me because um, what this means is that that two millimeters in chain length because there's nothing different about the, the tensioner we probably could have reused the old tensioner um, but that two millimeters of chain length makes a difference and if you think about it this chain would not have to get much longer for this to this to push I mean we're measuring in millimeters down here so but you can see that a new chain brought that back by probably five millimeters or so so I'm guessing that I'm just guessing that that was the cause of the rattle see. all right before you put the oil pump back on you should need uh, to replace those three o-rings pretty simple but you know what these are gonna fall I don't want these to fall out how can I make sure they stick in there I might I might just put a little are those gonna fall out maybe they won't maybe they'll be okay all right oh well, that one's gonna fall out the other thing it's definitely worth doing um, new oil seal um, crankshaft seal right there okay all right so we got the three uh, o-rings in uh, I got a liquid gasket running all the way around here and I think this is going to be the hardest part of the whole uh, repair here is getting this thing back in here without scrubbing this gasket off so I'm holding it up here because it's about the only place you can hold it uh, without scrubbing it off so I've practiced this a few times and I just hope this is going to go okay because if you scrub this gasket off what's going to happen what's going to happen is you're going to have oil leak so I've hit it on two spots already but there's no turning back now So now I put a hand down below to try to support it coming down, but of course you can't grab it at the bottom because the gasket is there. Gotta get around the crankshaft here. I'm suspending it at the bottom here so it doesn't scrub off so come down here Andrew look around here I got three fingers underneath the oil seal here and I've been real careful not to let that bottom touch down yet and now I can finally because I'm in the right spot let it sit down there 
and hope that I've got a good seal along the bottom and I can see it oozing out so that's good. Okay. Oh, look at this. Look what I did. See this right here? Like I got gasket on the chain. That's bad. So while that's dry, I gotta get as much of that off there as I can, man. Yep, that's not what I was hoping to do. All right guys, sorry my cameraman had to go to bed, so I'll just let you know where I am. I did my best to clean up the uh, gasket that was on there, just trusting that that'll work its way out into the bottom of the oil pan once the engine gets going and hopefully flush, its, flush itself out as it goes. Like I said, I knew that was gonna be the trickiest part. Okay, so then what we do, is down the bottom there's two uh, distinct uh, bolts that that go these are the first two to go in uh, just put those in uh, it says just put them put them in lightly and then there's these five of these uh, larger eight millimeter bolts those are 12 12 millimeter socket head there and uh, those are those are going in now there's one that needs to go right here and this, uh, whatever that is, I don't know what that is, uh, is in the way of this bolt going in there. So I need to, um, I'll put the jack under the engine and lift it up a little bit and then I can get that, that bolt in there. And these ones get tightened to 31 uh, Newton meters and then we're gonna put the rest of the small bolts in. All right, where are we at now? Uh, we've installed uh, all the bolts. Get the five uh, eight millimeter bolts. There's like seven other ones down here. I told you about the two, uh, one here, one there, and then of course there's two up uh, in the bottom, securing that 13 newton meters for those two. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you that I found was helpful was, can you see this, the pulley down here, this pulley I took, I took off, see if I can get the light in there and you can see it, maybe not, anyway, I took that pulley off and then I just zip tied it to the back of the engine to make room, if you, if you had that pulley on, uh, just even just hanging there like it needs to go to the back in order to make room you saw how much trouble I had just putting that thing uh, in without it so um, next up is to put the engine side engine mount back all right side engine mount here my camera guy is, uh, is back I thought he went to bed he actually just went to make a really awesome snack what was it it was uh like an egg sandwich and okay so this isn't going on too good egg mcmuffin egg mcmuffin and spicy fish fillet <laughs> what a combo super spicy these are supposed to be replaced it says replace these do you think i replaced this like 19 millimeter bolt no why do they want it to be replaced Probably the engineers say it can only be stressed once like that. <clears throat> They're probably like a $10 bolt. Am I putting a new one in? No. What's gonna happen if I don't? What's gonna happen is probably nothing. Probably the engineers have like a big factor of safety on that. But if I go over the biggest bump, in Eastern Canada, then I might break it in the engine. Oh, what happened to the engine now? It would fall out? No. One of these would break, and maybe the other one would break. And then this thing would probably bend. And if they all broke, then yeah, the engine would fall out, and I would need a new car. 
And I would crash and die <laughs> and go to heaven. It's so, all okay, it's okay. It's getting late. <laughs> Stop, Dad, he says. Stop, Dad, please. You're embarrassing yourself so badly right now. All right, now it says to do this, uh, to just install those hand tight. Well, this one's not hand tight. No, just get this, Andrew. That one. That's part of the engine mount. I didn't know what that was earlier. <laughs> I'm not a mechanic. All right, folks, so sorry we ran out of battery power there last night. Uh, got everything back together, as you can see. Belts back on, alternators back in, head gasket, everything's back together. Don't forget, uh, back there there's a PVC uh, hose put on. Clamp is hard to get at. And uh, we got everything tightened up. So, I'm just going to fill her back up with oil because uh, that gasket that I was using says give it 24 hours before you run it. I'm going to put some oil in and uh, we'll give her a go and see if that has got rid of uh, that rattle. Alright, so we got everything back together and we're going to give it a go. Timing chain reinstalled. Everything should be good to go. Let's see how it sounds. Hmm. That's it, man. That noise is gone. Yeah, hope you get something out of that timing chain. And uh, confession, I got to tell you, I scammed you on this video, but I tried starting it the other day and um, I realized that the air compressor pulley needed to go. So that probably was contributing to the original noise. Hopefully I needed to do the timing chain. I did need to do the timing chain because, uh, well, we talked about that. It was length and it was due. But I also needed to do the air compressor pulley. I just didn't spin it. I didn't, I didn't check it. I checked all the other ones, but I didn't check, check that. So, um, you know, did I replace a whole compressor? No. Did I replace a clutch? No. I ordered a $12 uh, bearing from eBay, and I took the time to take it all apart and uh, replace that. So it's sounding better than it has um, for quite a while now. Anyways, I'm happy with that. Take care, YouTubers.